consciousness and uh, I think uh, Maharaj has been in various capacities he's been temple president in Bombay, uh, Belkam and Vrindavan and I remember that when I was uh, studying Krishna Conscious 2008, uh, 2007 where Maharaj was a temple president in uh, Vrindavan and Maharaj used to come around so easily, so hum hum humanly personified and I used to hear him speak to all everybody else it was so wonderful just to see that I was, was wishing that wish all temple presidents could be like that and we're still looking for a temple president like Maharaj since he's been there for that. Maharaj, um, in 96, when it was 100 years Prabhupada's uh, century, Maharaj traveled all over around 250 cities in India and Nepal and did this uh, debate competitions and traveled in 5,000 colleges there to spread this Bhagavad Gita and spread Prabhupada's glory. It's just really amazing for that. I think uh, we learned a lot from Maharaj. Maharaj, I think, was a pioneer in college preaching programs in India and how to get easily accessible to uh, student community. I was talking to Sankirtan Prabhu uh, like an hour back. He says, tell Maharaj that he's all our guru uh, for that because the way he preached this uh, college movement, we are still trying to spread all over here for that. So, without saying too much, one other thing which uh, Maharaj is doing a very beautiful project I was reading. It's called Self-Sufficient Vedic Echo Village in Belgaum. And I think as Prabhupada said that we should have self-sufficient communities. So this is one of the uh, shining examples for that. And uh, we will learn more about Maharaj when I get personal association, how the community is built. So thank you so much, Maharaj, for coming here. It's our pleasure for that. Right behind. And I wish you all the best for this project. As you can see, this place is not enough to accommodate so many devotees and all of you are preaching <coughs> and trying your best. So I think Lord Jagannath will definitely reciprocate and he will facilitate your strong desires to give him a better home, a larger home, and also to accommodate more and more devotees. Is that a right. When you get the laptop. Okay. If it's there, it's fine. Otherwise, we'll just... Hare Krishna. Hare 
जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरिवर थारी Yeah. 
Satyavadakacharya Shtotra Sat, this divine grace of her Charanara Vinda Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada Ki Jaya, Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jaya, Shri Shri Jagannath Paladev Subhatra Mani Ki Jaya, Shri Shri Gaur Nitai Ki Jaya, Nitai Gaur Primanam Devi, all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories, all glories, all glories to Sri Guru and Gauranga. Jnana Timirandhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmaya Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manovishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Padamayam Dadati Svapadantikam Vande Aham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathanvitam Tam Sajeevam Sadvaitam Sadvabhutam Parijana Sajitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhanvitam Shcha Namo Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gaudamani Pracharide Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Ashtyatya Deshatarine Mukam Karoti Vachala Pangun Lankayate Hirin Yatripata Mahamvande Shri Guru Dina Taranam Vancha Kalpataru Yascha Kripa Sindhu Nevacha Tadithanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Vedaka Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I was requested today to speak on the Purushottam Adhikmas, which is about to come very shortly, starting on the 17th. And what is the date today? And last night. Night. So just another roughly another week's time. This very important month will start. And it is necessary for us to know something about this month. I think all of you please check your mobile phones. Do you know what I did in Vrindavan? I used to find them 500 rupees <laughs> if the phone rang in the class. The $500 will be built again. <laughs> then you will encourage everyone to come with phones here and let the phones ring. <laughs> so how many of you I have not heard of this Purushottam Madhikmas? Can you raise your hand? Okay, everyone has heard something, okay. How many of you are aware of the importance of the Adhikmas? Raise your hands. Okay, fine. So, before we begin, let's have a small lesson in astronomy. Agreed? How many of you have looked up in the night sky? And what have you noticed? What have you seen? Stars, stars. stars. Mm. constellations. Mm. What have you seen about the constellations? Keep changing. Keep changing meaning? Every other day it means different. Yeah, so you will see different constellations at different times of this year, 
even at different times of the night. Why does that happen? Why do you see different constellations? Because from our point of view, on the earth, the sky is like a rotating dome. Yes? It rises in the east, it moves at a certain speed, and in 12 hours, it sets. Then again, it goes below. We don't see. Then it will rise again and come up. So now, you should be able to see the same constellations every day of the, every night of the year, if it were only that. But the constellations will rise four minutes earlier every day. That means, exactly one year from now, the same constellation will rise at the same time when you see it from the same location. Okay? So all the constellations, imagine that you have stuck a wallpaper on the dome and the dome is moving. <coughs> so on the wallpaper you have many, many constellations. So on that wallpaper the relative positions of the constellations do not change. Do you get this point? Constellation 1 with respect to constellation 2 will be the same. Even within the constellation, the different nakshatras, everything will be the same. So the whole sky is moving like this, from east to the west. Four minutes earlier every day. So therefore, in the different seasons, you see different constellations in the night sky, even from the same place. However, there are some things that change, even in this backdrop. They are the planets, and they also include the sun and the moon. So they have their own motion in the night sky, over and above the overall motion of the wallpaper. So imagine now that in this rotating dome, which has a wallpaper of the constellations, imagine that there are some planets that are moving back and forth on it. Okay, so those planets are having their own motion, superimposed on the backdrop. Now we are interested in the sun and the moon. So the moon, when it appears in a certain constellation, then every day after that it will appear slightly in a different location. And exactly after 354 days and a little about that, maybe three, almost 354 and a half days, it will be exactly in the same location again. So one year of the moon has passed. Clear? So one lunar year is when the moon rises again in the same constellation. Correct? Similarly for the sun. If the sun is in a particular constellation today, seen from Baltimore, exactly 365 and a quarter days from now, it will again be seen in the same constellation at the same point. So that is one solar year. That is 365 and something days. So how many years, how many days is the lunar year? 354 something. Okay, 354 plus some fraction. And how many days is the solar calendar? 365 and something. So what is the difference? Roughly 11 days. So after one year has elapsed, the time difference is 11 days. After two years have elapsed, 22 and something days, maybe 23 days. After three years have elapsed, 34, 35, something like that. So now, if this goes on increasing, if you allow this gap to increase as it will every year, then there will be a huge mismatch between the solar calendar and the lunar calendar. Therefore, what is done? Therefore, every time that 30 months have elapsed, 30, the three years period has elapsed, or a little below three years actually, between two and a half to three years. To bring the solar and lunar calendars to match again, one extra lunar month is added. Okay? So every two and a half to three years, one lunar month is added to the lunar calendar to make it again match with the solar calendar. Because of this 11 days difference. So every lunar month is about 29 and a half days, average. So this happens 
where an average in each month is constituted of tithis, which are not of equal duration. They are all of different lengths of time. But totaling 354 days. So the extra month that is added every two and a half to three years is called the Adhik Maas. Adhik means extra. Maas means month. So this extra month is added. I will take a brief detour now to talk about Jagannath Puri. Especially now it is very important. What is upcoming in Jagannath Puri now? What is a big event that is going to come? Rath Yatra, yes, that happens every year. But something special. In Navakalevara. Navakalevara. What is Navakalevara? When the deities are changed. Every year what happens? to Jagannath. Are the deities changed? No. no. Then what happens? True. They are freshly painted. When are they painted? After, After Snan Yatra. So Snan Yatra is the time when the deities of Jagannath, Baladev, Subhadra are physically bathed with water. And thousands of pots of water from the Kund, certain special Kund called the Sona Kua nearby. Water is taken from that and hundreds and hundreds of pots are used to bathe the deities. Now, what is the paint on the deities of Jagannath, Baladev, Subhadra? Chemical paint or natural paints? Natural pigments, natural paints, not chemicals. So they are not fast colors. So they, if you pour water on them, they will get washed away. Then how do they do Abhishek of Jagannath every day? Does anybody know? Reflection. Reflection, that's right. So the pujari would place the mirror in front of the deity and then they will do Abhishek on the deity. On the mirror, I beg your pardon. Because if you do physical Abhishek on Jagannath's body, all the paint will go away in one, in one bath. Because it is natural pigments. So therefore, once a year, the physical Abhishek happens. And that is a Snan Yatra time. So by the time the Abhishek is over, all the paint has come off. Or it is all over, it is all mixed up. It doesn't look good for, they are not in a position to give darshan again. So then for 15 days, uh, Lord Jagannath does not give any darshan. What is this period called? The 15 days after Snan Yatra, Anavasa, Anavasa, where he does not give darshan. And at this time, he is said to be sick. So Lord Jagannath has some fever, some viral infection or something. So he gets a lot of fruit juices and some herbal medicines and so on. No antibiotics are given to him. <laughs> so then he recovers. But actually what happens? Inside, certain Dalitapatis are doing service to Jagannath. The regular pujaris are not allowed to come. In that, in that period of 15 days, only these special devotees who are descendants of Vishwavasu Shabara, the original worshipper of Nilamadha, as per the blessing given by Jagannath at that time, that tradition has continued till today, and they are the ones who serve Jagannath in that period. So once that period is over, the painting is over, the, then the Lord is ready for Rathyatra. So the painting is called Angarag because he gets a new coat of paint, so he looks fresh and shining again. And then Rath Yatra happens, the deities are taken on the Rath from Jagannath temple to Kundicha temple. Now how long does the deity remain? Are the deities changed? Jagannath Baladev Subhadra? Yes, they are changed. And that change is called Nava Kalevar. Kalevar means body, Nava means new. So there are new sets of deities that come in. How frequently does this change happen? How many say 12 years? Okay. How many are saying 19 years? Okay. How many have a different answer? <laughs> okay, there is no fixed year, it varies. Why? That's the correct answer, but why does it vary? based on the dream that the certain people get 
point? No, but if it's going to be at a fixed time, there will be a, it varies, but there is a formula. It just doesn't happen randomly. What is the answer? Huh? When the Adhik mass coincides with the month of Ashad, that is when the Navakalevar happens. So this time it is coinciding. So it may be 12 years, it may be 13 years, it may be 19 years. It depends on the calendar. So it is known in advance. So well in advance you know when that Adhik mass will coincide with Asha. So therefore, instead of the usual 15-day gap between the Snan Yatra and the Rathi Yatra, this time you have a gap of one and a half months. Why is that? Because that Adhik mass has come in the middle. So therefore, there is one and a half months gap. So this is the story of the Adhik mass. Now, because this was an extra month that was added to the calendar, it did not have the usual quota of auspicious days. It is on such auspicious days in the Vedic culture that certain rituals, religious rituals and other sacrificial performances are to be done. We call it Muhutta, right? Whether it's a marriage or whether it's a house opening, housewarming ceremony and so on and so forth. In Vedic culture people refer to the Pancham or to the Vedic calendar. They find out an auspicious date to do things. But because this Adhik Mas is an extra month that is added, so there is no auspicious date. Therefore, this month was considered Malamas. It became known as Malamas. Mal means dirt, something very dirty. It became known as a Malamas for what reason? Because you could not perform any religious activity, any uh, karma kandic activity. Now in this world, many people do not accept any form of religion. And those who do, most of them accept religion in a very ritualistic way. Without knowing the real purpose of religion. And even amongst them, most of them have some materialistic motive for following the principles of religion. They want some material benefit. They want some wealth or they want some material progress or whatever it may be, some material desire to fulfill. So in the Vedic culture, there are different types of uh, injunctions and sections in the Vedic scriptures meant for different types of people. So the section of the Vedas which deals with such people who are materialistic, who want to use the scriptures or religion as a vehicle for material advancement, there is scope given for them also. That is called the Karmakanda section of the Vedas. Then those who rise above that Karmakanda and understand that the goal of life is not only material advancement, there is something spiritual. Then they come to the path, they reject it this month. They gave it all sorts of bad names. This is a useless month, condemned month. This is Malamas. <coughs> Mal actually means two. So this is a rejected month. So it got a very bad name. So, the, even in Vedic culture, everything is personal. So nowadays we have a tendency to impersonalize or depersonalize everything. But behind everything, there's always a person or a set of persons. For example, when we say, the government here has made a law. It's an impersonal way of saying it. But government is comprised of people, isn't it? So when we say government has made a law, it means that somebody somewhere has made that law. So similarly, in Vedic culture, everything is personal. Every planet has a predominating deity. The predominating deity of the earth is Prithvi Devi or Bhumi Devi. Every planet has a presiding deity. Every constellation, every nakshatra has a predominating deity. The day, the night, the seasons, the directions, they all have predominating deities. They are individuals who are given charge of that particular place or that time. So there is also predominating deity of the Adhikmas, Malamas. 
So naturally, because she was rejected by everybody, she was blasphemed and criticized and condemned and rejected by everybody, she was very depressed. She became very sad. So what to do? <clears throat> Nobody is accepting me. I don't have a husband, I don't have a protector, nobody is looking at me. Look at all these other months, they are moving in their own charming ways. So then she went to Lord Narayan in Badri Kashram. Actually this whole conversation is given in the Padma Purana. And the whole origin starts with Sutta Goswami speaking to the sages of Naimisharanya. Now as you know, all our scriptures, the Vedic scriptures, are basically dialogues within dialogues. Dialogue within a dialogue, within a dialogue, within a dialogue. Sutta Goswami speaks to the sages at Naimisharanya. Then they, Sutta Goswami quotes a dialogue between Shukadev Goswami and Maharaj Parikshit. In the course of that discussion, Shukadev Goswami quotes many other conversations. For example, between Narad Muni and uh, Vasudev or between Maitre Muni and Vidura, like that. So, so also, here the primary conversation is between Sutta Goswami and the sages at Naimisharanya. And then he quotes a conversation that happened between Narad Muni and Lord Narayan. He was told by the Lord when he went to Padrikasha. Narad Muni, <coughs> he hears about the glories of Adikmas from Lord Narayan. So Lord Narayan says that this Malmas came to me in great anxiety. She was crying like anything. So Lord Narayan was surprised. He said, whoever takes my shelter, takes the shelter of my lotus feet, never has anything to grieve about. So why are you so unhappy? You have come to my lotus feet. You cannot go away from here in vain. Your visit will never be in vain. So tell me, what is your problem? So she said, everybody has rejected me. All the other months are very happy. But I am the extra month that is put in the middle somewhere. <laughs> so people disrespect me. Nobody performs any religious activities in my month. So she began to cry. She said, I don't feel like living. I want to commit suicide. Because I have been completely rejected by the society. So Lord Narayan said, no, 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 don't do all that, don't worry, nothing is, you will be taken care of. What we will do is, your problem is rather severe. So I will take you to Lord Krishna in Golok Vrindam. So you come with me. So then he caught her by the hand, she was crying all the time. So he escorted her all the way to Golok Vrindavan. So there the doorkeepers of Goloka saw that Lord Narayan is personally coming. So they offered their respects. And the, the glare, the dazzling effulgence of Goloka Vrindavan was so strong that Malamas Devi could not see it. So she, the Lord Narayan put her behind him so that the glare will be blocked. Then Lord Narayan took her straight to Lord Krishna. As soon as they came in front of Krishna, <clears throat> she went and fell at his feet and started sobbing very loudly. Oh, I wish I was dead. I wish I was dead. I want to give up my life. Then Krishna looked at Lord Narayan and said, In Goloka Vrindavan, how can somebody be unhappy like this? It's not possible. What is the problem? What is the difficulty with this lady? So then she again told her problem. That I have been rejected, condemned, etc., etc. Therefore I see no reason to live. <clears throat> so Lord Krishna felt great compassion for her. So he said, don't worry. Lord Narayan, you also accept no for certain that anyone who has received your compassion will never go in vain. Therefore, it is natural that I must also offer my compassion to this girl. So he said, from today, <clears throat> he told that lady, he told Malamas Devi, I have accepted you as my own. In fact, I will give you complete shelter, complete protection. From today, you will have nothing to worry about. On the contrary, I will accept you as my wife. And not only that, I will lend my name to you. So I am Purushottam, the best among all the people. So you will be known as Purushottamas. And because you will be non-different from me, you will be identical to me, 
you will also have my name. Therefore, you will be endowed with not just my name, because my name is different, is non-different from everything about me. So therefore, you will have my power, my opulence, my glories, my beauty, everything. <clears throat> so all my qualities will now reside in you. Because I have accepted you now as my own. So you will have nothing to worry about. And if anybody does devotional service in this period, that person will, will, will gain many, many thousands of times more benefit than if he or she does it in any other time. And on the contrary, if somebody offends you, that means offends this extra month, then he will suffer very severe consequences. And I will tell you of what happened. And this is the story. Now we will move to another era. We will move to the end of Dwapar Yuga. Remember this story up till now. Keep it filed away in your memory. We will come to another story. When the Pandavas were living in the forest, after Yudhishthir Maharaj had lost the gambling match, everything was taken away from him. They went to the Kamyakavan, the Kamyak forest. So they are naturally living in the forest without any wealth, without any belongings, without the kingdom. They were living a very hard life. Many Brahmins and sages had also accompanied them. So all day long Yudhishthir Maharaj and the Pandavas would hear the pravachans, the lectures of these sages. Sometimes, of course, Draupadi, Bhima, Arjuna would get very angry. We, are, we want to right this injustice. But Yudhishthir would calm them down. So it was not an easy period living in the forest. So then, one time, Lord Krishna heard in Dwarka that the Pandavas are in Kamyaka forest. So he reached there. For Lord Krishna, he can reach any place, any time, no traffic jams for him, no times. Anywhere he wants, he's there. So he arrived at Kamyakavan. And then when he saw the condition of the Pandavas, he was very angry because he remembered the envious and the wrong activities of Duryodhan. He became so angry, he was trembling with rage. He said, now I'm going to destroy not just Duryodhan, but the whole universe. So the Pandavas had never seen Lord Krishna so angry. So they pacified him with great difficulty. Please don't, please don't destroy the world. Please calm down. And then Lord Krishna said, all right, then I will tell you something very wonderful. There is a month called Purushottam month. And then Krishna starts himself narrating the same story that I narrated to you so far. Okay? He narrates the story about how uh, Malamas Devi was brought by Lord Narayan to him in Golokvinda. So now we will continue that story. So then he said, the glories of Purushottamas are very great. But Yudhishthir Maharaj, all of you Pandavas, neglected to observe this month. You did not honor this month as you should have done. The Purushottam month that went by recently. Therefore, you all have had to suffer like this. By coming in the forest, your belongings were taken away from you. You had to suffer so much humiliation. So then, this Malamas or this Purushottam Adikmas is extremely powerful. <coughs> you should all follow. And let me tell you another story. Then he looked at, he began to say, Some time ago there was a sage whose name was Medhavi. He was a very austere sage and all day he would perform austerities and he would chant the name of Lord Krishna, that is his own Krishna's name. And he had a daughter. This daughter was a very beautiful young lady, but the father did not have time to get her married because he was always very busy in his austerities. So what happened is that one day Medhavi Rishi, as he was performing austerities, chanting the name of Lord Krishna, he left this world. And this girl was left alone in the world. She had no relatives, no friends, no brother, no husband, no father, nobody. 
So she was very, very sad. So she started crying, thinking, what is going to happen now? What will I do? And at that time, the great sage, powerful sage, Durvasa Muni came. So Durvasa Muni was a friend of the sage Medhavi. When he heard that Medhavi sage had, Rishi had died, so naturally he came and then he met the daughter. He wanted to give some protection and shelter to this daughter of sage Medhavi. So Medhavi, this daughter came to Durvasa Muni and started crying very loudly. <coughs> Durvasa Muni felt very sorry for her. She said, I don't have anybody. Can you at least please help me to get married so I can find a good husband? She said, okay, you have been through a very difficult time, Durvasa Muni said, I can understand. But what you should do is, the Purushottam Adik Mahas is coming very shortly. You should observe this month with great care. This month is extremely potent for anyone who does devotional service. And by the way, I will just give a small side comment that our Vaishnava Acharyas in fact say that the Karmakanda people may call this month as Malamas, but we understand the word Malamas differently. We say that all the Mala in the heart is erased because this is the month that is especially suitable for performing devotional service to Lord Krishna. It is only devotion to Krishna that will work in Malamas. Nothing else will work. So therefore, by performing devotional service, all the contamination of the heart is cleansed. One can become a pure hearted devotee of Krishna. So anyway, this is how we as devotees look at this month. So Durvasa Muni was explaining the glories of this month to this girl. But unfortunately, this girl was a little immature and she was a little haughty. So after Durvasa Muni had explained, she spoke a little arrogantly to Durvasa Muni and told him, My dear sage, how is this possible? Everybody condemns this month as Malamas. They have rejected it, they call it useless. No religious activities can happen in this month. And you are saying this is such a great month, such a powerful month, and you, you have spoken so long about the glories of this month, that if you do this devotional service, this is the result, and so on. I don't believe you. I think you are telling lies. You are just deceiving me. So she went on speaking like that. Now you know very well about Durvasamuni. <laughs> what do you know about Durvasamuni? He gets angry very fast. He is after all an expansion, partial incarnation of Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva's name is Ashutosh. Ashu means quickly. Tosh means to be satisfied. So Lord Shiva is very easily satisfied. Just with some bel patra, leaves of the bilva tree, he is very easily satisfied. But he is also equally angered. So similarly, Durvasa Muni is very easily satisfied, but very easily angered. And we know that when Durvasa Muni gets angry, he curses like anything. So everybody is terrified of Durvasa Muni's curses. So they are very careful in how they deal with Durvasa Muni. So now Durvasa Muni, who already has an angry nature, he was boiling. This girl was speaking left and right. <laughs> Durvasa Muni was unable to control himself. Then finally when this girl finished talking, then he said, you are, he controlled himself with great difficulty. He said, you are a very foolish girl. I would have given a terrible curse to you today because of what you have offended, how you have offended me, but you are the daughter of my dear friend, so I am not cursing you. So I am not, I am not taking your words upon me as an offense. So your offense to me, I am willing to overlook. But I cannot ignore how you have offended this Purushottamas. Because this month is not different from Krishna himself. <coughs> So you have blasphemed this Purushottha month and you will have to bear the consequences of that. I cannot save you from that. And Durva Samuni left from that place and went away. Soon after that, this girl lost all her beauty. She lost her luster. She lost all her good qualities. She became weak and diseased and she didn't know what to do all alone in the world. 
So then she said, thought to herself, that only Lord Shiva can save me now. So she started doing austerities to please Lord Shiva. So he's Ashutosh. So he got pleased very quickly. <laughs> so after a certain period of performing austerities, one fine day suddenly Lord Shiva came in front of her. So when this girl saw Lord Shiva personally present, she lost her presence of mind. So when suddenly a big, very important person comes in front of you and you're not prepared for it, you don't know what to speak, isn't it? You get tongue-tied. You become very nervous and flustered and you don't know how to welcome that person or what you should speak to that person. So Lord Shiva appeared all of a sudden and he asked this girl, so you have performed austerities, you have called me, I have come. So what do you want from me now? So she was very nervous and she was trembling and so then she wanted a husband. So she told Lord Shiva, I want a husband, I want a husband. She said it five times. She wanted only one husband, but she was so nervous and flustered and everything. She said, I want, I want to have. So she said five times. So Lord Shiva said, okay, you will have five husbands. She was shocked. No, 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 I don't want five husbands. I want one husband. No, no, but what I have said cannot go wrong. No, no, please, please, Lord Shiva, please forgive me. Please have mercy on me, etc. So he said, okay, not in this life. I will postpone it to the next life. <laughs> So in the next life, then in the course of time, this girl died, as one day all of us have to die. So then she was born from the sacrificial fire of King Drupad, who was performing some yagyas and so on. So because she was born from the sacrificial fire of Drupada, she became known as Draupadi. And then it was destined for her to have five husbands. So then Lord Krishna, he had come to Kamyakaban to talk to the Pandavas. So he said, So Yudhishthir Maharaj, I have told you how all of you were actually Hari. Shri Shri Jagannath, Bhagavad Gita, Shri Shri Gaur Nithai Ki Jai. So Yudhishthir Maharaj, I have already told you why it is that all of you had to suffer so much. Because you didn't observe the Purusha of the Madhikmas. And as far as you are concerned, Draupadi, because you offended Purushottam Mas in your earlier life in such a bad way, so therefore you had to be disrobed by Dushasan in the open assembly. That is why you had to undergo that humiliation. And plus, you asked for husband five times. So then you have got five husbands now in this life. So now all of you, Krishna said, the upcoming Adik Mas, it will come soon now. So all of you should follow this Adik Purushottam Mas very strictly. And if you do it with great devotion, then everything, all your desired objects will be achieved. And this time, when the Adik Mas, Purushottam Mas came, Yudhishthir Maharaj was very careful. He made sure that they would not forget it. So they all observed the Purushottam Adik Mas very, very carefully and with great devotion. And eventually, of course, they got the mercy of Lord Krishna, they got the kingdom back and so they ruled for 36 years. So this Purushottam month, therefore, is very important for us. In fact, when Narad Muni heard from Lord Narayan about this month, he said, what is this Purushottam month? I have heard of Vaishak, which is holy, Chaitra is holy, and I have heard of Kartik month. But this Purushottam month, what is this? That is when Lord Narayan narrated this whole story. So this Purushottam month, therefore, is a month in which, as I said before, only devotional service works. And that is the best thing to do in this Purushottam month. And in fact, we will get many times more the benefit than if we do devotional service in other times. So therefore, a lot of special services are done by devotees and some austerities as well, just like we do in Kartik, right? In the month of Kartik, we offer special services like offering lamp to Krishna every day. We sing songs about Krishna, we do kirtan, we do some austerities, give up some favorite item. Somebody will give up rice, somebody will give up a sweet, somebody for that one month. People do different austerities. Somebody chants extra rounds. Every, every day in Kartik, I will chant 32 rounds, somebody decides like this. 
So similarly, we also have to follow certain austerities and devotion, extra devotional practices in this Purushottam month. And one should uh, control one's mind, one's senses and immerse oneself in devotional service. So the scriptures are full of many, many different um, ideas of what you can do in this one month. But we will not go into that because then next day you will not come back to the temple. <laughs> if you hear all the things that are meant to be done, just like Karthik month. So many things are supposed to be done in Karthik. So nowadays for people to do all these things is practically very difficult. But the principle in austerity is that we have to do activities to please Lord Krishna. Yesterday I was with some devotees and I was explaining the real meaning of the word upavas. Generally the word upavas, what does it mean? Fast. Fast. That means you don't eat something. But the word upavas has a much broader meaning, actually speaking. For example, the word upanishad, what does it mean? Upanishad. To sit near and below a guru and to hear from him. To be surrendered. Ni means below, upa means near. So, upanishad, this is. Similarly, there is upavas, to be near the Lord, the Supreme Lord. So, when one places oneself near to Krishna, that is called upavas. Vas means to reside, to stay. So how does one come close to Krishna? By performing devotional service. So the real meaning of Upvas is that we perform even more devotional service in this month and by that we come closer to Krishna. And as we come closer to Krishna by devotional service, he becomes very pleased. He is very happy with us. So. Austerity in terms of giving the body pain or inconvenience like not eating food etc. has its place, it has its importance. And we should do something, whatever we can. But of course these days it is not possible to do austerities like they did in the earlier ages. Prabhu Maharaj could fast for months together without even taking water. We cannot do that. One day we become, yes, in a very difficult position if we fast from water. So the main spirit of Upavas is to perform more seva to Krishna, by which we come closer to him, chant more, hear more, read more, offer more seva to the deities, cook for the deities, like this. Especially more hearing and chanting. So in this Purushottam month, and in every Purushottam month, we should try to increase our devotional service. In Vrindavan, it is a very festive atmosphere just like in Kartik. And all the temples will have special uh, deep dan going on and uh, many, many things will happen there. The devotees gather together to sing many, many bhajans and songs. So we should also do this in our temples. In Purushottam, <coughs> we should do extra hearing and chanting, maybe every morning and every evening. Morning, of course, most all of you have to go to work. Maybe you can't come. But if you can come in the evenings in the temple, you should have some special programs going on here. Maybe deep down like you do in Kartik, extra bhajans, extra kirtan, katha should happen, extra katha should happen here in this one month. In Vrindavan, there are uh, devotees chant many songs. Amongst them, songs like Chaura Gragandya Purushashtakam or Sri Nanda Nandanashtakam or Jagannathashtakam are chanted. Why Jagannathashtakam? Because Jagannath is Lord Purushottam and this is Purushottam month. And Jagannath Puri is also called Purushottam Kshetra. So then also songs about Lord Jagannath are chanted, pastimes of Lord Jagannath are heard. Even other aspects of uh, other forms of the Lord, yes, we can hear those pastimes as well. Then we also chant, uh, let's say, um, other songs. We will chant Bhagavad Gita 15 chapter. Many temples do that, many devotees do that. Why 15 chapter? Because it is Purushottam Yoga, the Yoga of the Supreme Person. 
Of course, you can chant other chapters too. So some years ago in Vrindavan, we started doing that in our Krishna Balaram Mandir also. So the devotees will chant some chapters of Bhagavad Gita, recite some shlokas from different uh, sections of the Srimad Bhagavatam, say Kutti Maharani's prayers, Bhishma's prayers, and so on and so forth. And we sing songs in the evening and do Devadam. So I would suggest that here also, all of you can do some special devotional service in this Purushottam month. Lord Krishna has already promised great benefit to devotees who do extra service. It's only a few days away, but you have enough time to make some plans. In case you are unable to come to the temple, do it in your home. But it would be nice if everybody can come here together and you chant more, read more, hear more. Sleep on the floor if possible in this month. And whatever other basic simple services and austerities you can do, that will be fine. So what we will do is we will chant one song that is especially popular in Vindavan in this month. Chaura Dragandya Purushashtakam. Did that email come? Not yet. No. Okay. So we'll just sing the song. Uh, what about the projection? You want to project it or no? We have the uh, Pradyumna Prabhu, is it there to project on the screen or should we just rely on the sheet? Can you ask him? Pradyumna Prabhu, is it there uh, to project on the screen? It's also called... Yeah. Sri Chaura Gragandya Purusha Ashtakam. Ashtakam means eight verses. Purusha means person. Abhagarnya means foremost and Chaura means a thief, Chaura. So this is a song that glorifies the foremost of the thieves, the greatest of the thieves. So let me read the translation first so it will become easy for us to understand. It is said it is composed by Bilba Mangal Thakur but there is some difference of opinion about that. Many devotees believe it was not Bilva Mangal but somebody else. In any case, whoever did it, he was a great version. It's good enough for us. So the translation. I offer pranam to that foremost of thieves who is famous in Vraja as the butter thief and he who steals the gopis' clothes and who, for those who take shelter of him, steals the sins which have accrued over many lifetimes. I offer pranam to the foremost of thieves who steals Srimati Radhika's heart, who steals the dark luster of a fresh rain cloud, and who steals all the sins and sufferings of those who take shelter of his feet. He turns his surrendered devotees into paupers and wandering homeless beggars. Aho, such a fearsome thief has never been seen or heard of in all the three worlds. Mere utterance of his name Purges one of a mountain of sins. Such an astonishingly wonderful thief I have never seen or heard of anywhere. O thief, having stolen my wealth, my honor, my senses, my life, and my everything, where can you run to? I have caught you with the rope of my devotion. You cut the terrible news of Yamaraj. You sever the dreadful news of material existence and you slash everyone's material bondage. But you are unable to cut the knot fastened by your own loving devotees. O stealer of my everything, O thief, today I have imprisoned you in the miserable prison house of my heart, which is very fearful due to the terrible darkness of my ignorance. And there for a very long time you will remain, receiving appropriate punishment for your crimes of thievery. O oh Krishna, thief of my everything, the news of my devotion remaining forever tight, you will continue to reside in the prison house of my heart because I will not release you for millions of eons.
So we glorify the greatest thief. If anybody were to suddenly come in here and hear this, they will think, what is going on here? <laughs> These people are worshipping thieves. But you don't worship ordinary thieves. You worship the greatest of all the thieves. Vraja prasiddham navanita chauram Gopangana nam chadukula chauram Yes. 
I don't know if we have time for one of the questions. Question huh? So there are any short questions for a few minutes only. Yes. Maharaj, you mentioned about Dhrupadi and how she said five times that she wants her. I mean, not Dhrupadi. The daughter of Sage Maitreya, yes. yes. Uh, in the Mahabharata uh, movie, they showed a different version of the story that she wanted five different types of qualities and not one person was not capable of having all these qualities, therefore she had to marry. Are both versions correct or? This version is from the Padma Purana. So that is the accepted version. To what degree in these cinematic presentations they are faithful to the original, I am not sure. We have to see every particular area. But this narration comes from the Padma Purana. Any other questions? Yes. Thank you for coming. It was very nice to see you again. This Pushwatamas, is it accepted in uh, other religions? Uh, or do they know about this uh, nakshetra and other things? I'm sure astronomers, they know about it. So why it's not accepted in the American calendar? Because mostly, the question is why is this Atik Mas not followed in other cultures and lands? You see, they follow the solar calendar. Whereas the Vedic culture follows both, lunar as well as solar. But primarily so lunar. So our days are in terms of Tithis, the movement of the moon. Whereas they rely largely on the movement of the sun. And therefore, they also have their extra one day they add. As I mentioned, the movement of the sun to the same place takes place in 365 days and one quarter. So after four years, one extra day has to be added. That is called a leap year. So even there they have to do some adjustments. But the extra month is only because we follow both the solar and the lunar in the Vedic system. Chant more rounds and come together and sing about Krishna. Offer a lamp and don't criticize anyone in that one moment. <laughs> <laughs> and this is specially, specifically mentioned also. We must avoid <laughs> criticizing people in this moment, especially devotees. But of course, that principle is good all times, but we are especially careful in this one month. Okay? Quite a plateful. Yeah. <laughs> we, four years back, we had uh, Pushyotam last year. So we, uh, every Sunday, we were singing Jagannatha Shukam and it was very exciting. So this yes. year, we'll try to do, we can do every day. Yes, wonderful. Wonderful. We can do it. <laughs> and every day, there should be some katha, some narration, some reading. Maybe Jagannath's pastimes, Krishna's pastimes, something. It should be like a festival. See, Krishna consciousness is an excuse to have festivals. <laughs> you want more and more festivals. <laughs> like in Kalki. Yes? I don't know if I shall ask this question or not, but the, as you mentioned, this monk wants to sleep on the mattress, the floor. It's just austerity. Austerity. It's a little austerity. But even if you sleep on the floor on a comfortable mattress, that's... No, no, no. So you don't have to sleep on a bed of nails, but something simple. 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 
Okay, so thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Gaur Premanande. Hare Krishna.